Hey, Viking fans, as you know, we got ourselves a new wide receiver, former first round pick, and I'm going to talk about him next in three, two, one. <laughs> Gather around, Skull brothers and sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. Make sure you go down, click like, get me to 50 likes, push these videos. I appreciate it. You guys are, I'm nearing 2,000, guys. I'm 1872 or whatever uh, at the time I recorded this. Let's go. Let's go. I appreciate it. I want to be 2,000 by kickoff. All right. My first giveaway was a success. I gave away an Addison and uh, a Naylor uh, rookie card. I appreciate that. Push that video almost a thousand uh, views. It was like eight hundred. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll do another one this week probably. All right, make sure you stay tuned. Skull Vikings. All right, we got Nikhil Harry, former first round pick from the Patriots. What's happened? Who is this guy? All right. As usual, I like to look at their draft, NFL uh, draft profile, even veterans. Can you kind of see what the people thought he was going to be like? After watching video, I can say what I uh, can agree with. I've watched uh, uh, some tape on uh, his pro in the pros, and I watched a highlight reel from college. Um, what I can tell you, three years with uh, the Patriots, one year, did I say it right? Sorry, two years with the, let me double check. <laughs> two years or three years with the Patriots. Uh, three years with the Patriots, one year with the Bears. So I'm going to dive into it. Oh, you know what? Here's what I'm going to tell you the stats first, and then I'll go with the player, pro, player profile. And I'm going to tell you the whole story, not just the part of the story, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. New England. Um, played seven games for him, and as a rookie, played fourteen games as a as a second year player. Played twelve as a as a third year player, and with the Bears, only played seven. Okay. Game started five nine four zero targets twenty four fifty seven twenty two. So with Brady, his second year, he had fifty seven targets, thirty three catches. Now, an interesting tidbit is last two years, his yards per reception are 15.3 and 16.6. This, this is a reflection of what he was like in college. I'll, I'll talk about that. Five, five total TDs his entire career. His catch percentage last year was 77.8, so much better, much improved. However, didn't play much. Now, what I can tell you, Whole truth, nothing but the truth. Three of his four seasons, 2019 ankle. That was his draft year. 2020 started looking like a contributor. 2021 shoulder. And then last year, preseason camp, severe high ankle sprain. And then he also played for a running, quarter, running quarterback. So what are you going to do, right? So there is a opportunity for him with the Minnesota Vikings to make that fifth wide receiver or fourth wide receiver. I think Jalen Naylor is the truth. Uh, but who knows? Maybe something happens and we need another receiver. Is this a guy that can go to the practice squad? We can keep up to, what, 16 now and even veterans and a certain amount of veterans. Not a bad guy to have, right? He even returned a punt or two in college, I think. But, nah, he's not fast enough. I have some severe Laquan Treadwell vibes from this guy. I'm going to tell you the truth. Severe Laquan Treadwell vibes. He was a bully in college. And in the pros, he just didn't look fast. He didn't look fast. Um, but, again, injury, injury, injury. And then last year, severe injury to his ankle. Didn't play much. But, hey, worth a shot. Kwesi, way to go and find players. That's all he's been doing is bring a guy in. Bring a guy in. Let's see what he got. And this is what I like. 
We'll see on Thursday what we got here. He'll get plenty of playing time because we're not, you know, past the four top four receivers. We need to see what we got. We we do. I wouldn't mind uh, if he was a receiver that could return punts. Now the, in college, let's uh, let's pull it up. In college, it was shown that he was six four. He is not. He don't look six four. I uh, and in the NFL Combine, he measured in at six two. So he is not a six four receiver like some people are thinking he is. Oh, here's the example. Uh, Jeremy Fowler back in uh, last year, suffer, hurt preseason camp. He suffered a high ankle, appears to be severe, but is waiting for the evaluation. It was severe. He didn't play a whole lot last year. But uh, let's bring up his college profile, his draft profile. Arizona State. I remember there was some hype on him. I remember being some hype on him. I think he was the second receiver taken. I think he was uh, drafted late 20s or mid-20s. Let's see, 6'2", 228 pounds. Very strong-looking receiver. Very strong. He was a bully in college. 33 arms, not bad. Hand size, 9.5. Not, not huge, pretty average. Let's see here. 40-yard dash, 4.53, not bad. Not bad. 10-yard split, 1.55. Doesn't get off the lawn super fast, but pretty average. Vertical jump, nice, 38.5. Jumps out of the gym. Broad jump, 10.10.2. Nice. That's still pretty nice. Bench press, 27 reps for a receiver. I don't know anything about his blocking skills. Maybe his player bio, this is the first time reading it, will tell us. Harry is a native of Island of St. Vincent, moving to Arizona with, with his grandmother when he was very young. It was, a it was a national story when he returned to the Caribbean nation for the first time since coming to the United States to see his mother and sister in December 2017. It was a story because Harry had shown himself a future pro during his first two years from the Sun Devils. The top 20 overall high school recruit, 2,715 yards, 12 or 25 touchdowns in his two years at Chandler High School, Became ASU's got to go to weapon as a true freshman, starting all 12 games and leading all freshmen nationally with 58 receptions, 659 yards, five TDs. Harry was a first team all Pac 12 choice as a sophomore, leading the conference with 87 receiving yards per game, 82 and 1,142 eight TDs as a 13 game starter. He was a first team all conference pick as a junior, as well, covering 1,088 yards and uh, scoring nine times for 73 receptions. 14.9 average in 12 games. He chose not to participate in his team's bowl game to prepare for the NFL draft. Harry and Washington cornerback Byron Murphy have, ne have been friends since they both attended Marco State Niza High School as a sophomore. What do you know? I did not know this. Maybe it was somebody else. But his NFL draft pro profile says he's good friends with Byron Murphy. Hey, what do you know? That's great. That's great. He's got a friend on the team. That's good to know. Now, a couple a couple things to take away from this. Great story, by the way. And he's not one of those five-year COVID draft picks, right? He drafted before uh, COVID hit. He left early, right, 2019. And, uh, and so right now, he's going to be his 26-year season. 26 years. So in a lot of cases, some guys don't hit their stride for three years after the draft. Well, think if he was drafted at 22, this would be his big, you know, might be his big breakout year. So a sliver of hope. Again, let me remind you, strong Laquan Treadwell vibes. All right. Uh, draft projection round two. They took him in the first. Comparison to Allen Robinson. I could see that. Overview, back, back shoulder boss who thrives with contested catch opportunities outside the numbers but lacks explosive traits. Does have that. He does have that. He was, like, consistently good at that in college. Uh, Harry's ability to bot, and, and he didn't have a quarterback that did that in the pros. He didn't have a quarterback that could do that in the pros. Let's see if Kirk can do that. He's getting better at it. Harry's ability to body up opponents and win the ball skills is undeniable. Very true. All true. Got good ball skills, can catch the ball but his inability to find a 
uh, threatening top gear, true, or shake loose from tight man coverage must be accounted for within his new employer scheme. Very true. He's not fast, man. And he doesn't, he's not super bursty or quick. His experience playing inside should help the teams would love the impact as a run blocker. Good to hear. His competitiveness and ability to come down with the ball can make him a product productive member of wide receiver trio in short order. Strengths. Highly competitive as a, everything he does. Uh, he's a bully. He was a bully in college. He looked like it. He's super competitive. Consistently productive over three seasons. True. Fearless play demeanor with alpha swagger. True. Uses hands to swat coverage jams and release from press. Big presentable target on slants and zone work. Leverage, leverages and stems his way to open catch space. Plays with patience and poise to win combat catches. Strong hands as well-respected ball skills. Outworks opponents to carve out workspace in tight quarters. Wins jump balls with well-timed leaps and frame to shield and finishes. He boxes people out. It's very good. A um, lot of lot of that. Stiff arm getaways after the catch. Junkyard dog who's willing to scrap as a blocker. Glad to hear it. That could win. You remember how he said KJ's a really good uh, blocker? So is this guy, apparently. Can clinch and manhandle finesse corners in space. He, he he's, a, he's our strongest receiver. He's our strongest receiver right now as far as physical ability, physical strength, and uh, probably our tallest. Everybody's six foot or shorter. Feet not quick enough to, uh, here's weakness, quick not fit, feet not quick enough to stutter release versus press. Tends to wear tight uh, press coverage for much of the route. Da downhill speed fails to threaten most cornerbacks. True, NFL corners are likely to squat on the, and squeeze his brakes and turns. Two rough. Upright, slowing his route breaks. Suffered from a few uh, focus drops headed into traffic. Needs better urgency getting up the field after catch. Below average stop-start quickness to elude and accelerate wasn't a major factor in the red zone. Sources tell us all, all this talk about his lack of separation is overdone in the league. Nobody gets that much separation anyways. You have to know how to use your body and route leverage, and you need strong hands from what I've seen from him. He's... Does all that very well. Wide receivers coach AFC team. So that was probably the Patriots. So that being said, let me uh, pull up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a clip here, just a one play. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Let me make this bigger. This is him with the Bears. That's him beating Jair Alexander down the field. You get an example of here how he's he's just a a good uh, guy. Ball skills. Able, this is him. He he uh, scramble drill just goes on the fly. Good job by Jair Alexander catching up to him. You notice that means Harry's not that fast. And then great a job adjusting the ball. I'm gonna tell you he's got good ball skills. Tracks the ball well. Adjust the ball well. That's him. Just a smart play. Um, shows you how he's able to jump up and catch the ball. There's a lot of that in this college tape. There's a lot of that in this college tape. The problem is he doesn't get separation. He's not fast. He's not quick. And same problems as Laquan Treadwell. But what I don't see is the drops like Laquan Treadwell. So hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, with him hopefully he comes in shows what it can do we carry five possibly six receivers there might be a chance from him it's going to be hard because that fits if we if we do not keep if we do not keep um, Jalen Naylor at number four I don't know what to tell you with our talent evaluation but him coming in winning the fifth spot we keep a punt returner as a six six receiver or something to that effect, we'll see. We only kept five receivers last year. We we dropped some guys ISM that you know we didn't expect. I like I like his uh, potential of um, being on at least on the practice squad, being a big uh, receiver that we can pull in. Apparently, he runs well. We have a very big commit a run uh, run blocks well. 
Apparently, we have a big commitment to the run blocking this year. Just imagine him, K.J. Osborne, um, the two tight ends that we have on a goal line set. Nice. I'll take it. All right. Now, um, I, I, I just think good move, depth piece. Let's see what he can do on Tuesday night. Let's see what he can do on Thursday at the game. He should get a lot of playing time. He's got a chance to make the team or or wear purple on practices. So, uh, hey, look out for that. Thanks for listening. Skull Vikings. I like to tell you the truth. I like to tell you the whole story. He was hurt a lot. And here's an opportunity. High ankle sprain. It was, that's not. That's a free, That's an injury not caused by him just being injury prone. Someone hurt him. He got rolled up on. And that's why he got hurt. Um, hopefully... And when he plays, he plays hard. Give him a chance. Let's see what he's got. Make sure you hit like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about him. And go look at my video about depth chart. There's some shockers there. All right, Skull Vikings, cue the music. (laughs) 